chapter 21 environmental concepts this chapter discusses various environmental concepts market failure chaos theorem etc which affect environmental economics at a macro level cost and compensation criteria have also been discussed environment the term environment refers to the surroundings of an organism which includes both living and non-living components the space in which living beings exist is known as biosphere the biosphere is the zone of life on earth it is the global ecological system inter integrating all living beings and their relationship with the environment the environment is the aggregate of all those things and set of conditions which directly or indirectly influence not only the life of organisms but also the communities at a particular place. Environment includes all elements, factors and conditions that have some impact on growth and development of an organism. Classification of environment, geographical environment, it consists of all components provided by nature and hence can also be called as the natural environment. It is also referred to as the physical environment as it pertains to the physical requirements of life. These physical or geographic conditions are not dependent on the existence of humans. Sometimes humans have no control over the physical conditions of the environment. It includes natural resources, the earth surface, mountains, plains, land, water, desert, storms, cyclones, volcanoes, oceans, climatic factors and so on. It is also used to refer to biological situations such as complexities associated with plants and animals. The sustainability of the natural resources is known to contribute towards the economy of a country. Man-made environment. This environment is this environment is used to refer to the to the created by man in order to regulate and monitor certain environmental conditions. Some address it as a social cultural environment. It can further be divided into two types which are as follows. Internal environment. It is a social environment and it exists as long as a particular society exists. It pertains to the regulations, traditions, organizations and institutions. It involves customs and practices which are existence in every human group. It is addressed with names such as non-material, culture, social heritage, etc. This heritage is essential for the social life of humans to flourish. It is known to have an influence on an individual's life. External environment. Though advancement in the field of science and technology, humans have attempted to alter conditions of their physical environment. This outer environment is a result of these modifications which includes modern infrastructure in cities, our homes and their associated amenities, our modes of communication and transport, our resorts to conveniences and luxury, defined kinds of industry, manufacturing, luxurious commodities, electrical appliances and so on, which ultimately aims at civilization and urbanization. Environmental Economics Environmental economics deals with the relationship between the economy and the environment. It performs studies to determine the theoretical or empirical effects of environmental policies on the economy. The economic environment consists of all the macroeconomic and microeconomic factors that affect how we do business and exist in an economy. Environment as a public good. The concept of public goods is central to the economic analysis of the role of government in the allocation of resources. Generally, public good provides for benefit to public through state economics. Public good is a product or service that is non-excludable and non-depletable or non revealable Non-excludability. A non-excludable good is one that someone does not pay for or can avoid paying for to use or consume. It is not possible to exclude non-payers from consuming the god good. Non-refillery in consumption. It refers to the idea that the number of those who benefit from the use or enjoyment of such a public good does not necessarily affect the cost of providing it. Additional people consuming the good do not diminish the benefit to others. 
environment is deemed to be a public good because an individual is benefited by its use without paying anything example here soil trees etc environment quality environmental quality is a set of properties and characteristics of the environment either generalized or local and their effect on human beings and other organisms it is a measure of the condition of an environment relative to the requirements of one or more species environmental quality is a general term which can refer to varied characteristics that relate to the natural environment as well as the built environment such as air and water purity or pollution noise and the potential effects which may have on physical and mental health caused by human activities essential components of environmental quality air air quality is an important component of environmental quality air is the invisible mixture of gases that surrounds the earth air contains important substances such as oxygen and nitrogen that most species need to survive air pollution occurs when harmful or excessive quantities of substances including the gases co2 co so2 no ch4 cfc radon radon etc particles both organic and inorganic and biological molecules are introduced into earth's atmosphere it may cause disease allergic and even death to human water earth's earth's ocean contains 97 percent of the planet's water so just three percent is fresh water water with low content concentrations of salt water pollution is the contamination of water bodies usually as a result of human activities water bodies include lakes rivers oceans aquifers and groundwater water pollution results when contaminants are introduced into the natural environment water pollution is the leading worldwide cause of death and disease forest a forest is a large area dominated by trees many animals need forest to live and survive forests are very important and grow in many places around the world 300 million people worldwide live in forest and 1.6 billion depend on them for their livelihoods human activities including harvesting forest resources can negatively affect forest ecosystems soil Soil is a mixture of organic matter, minerals, gases, liquids and organisms that together support life. Soil is a major component of the earth ecosystem. The world's ecosystem are impacted in far-reaching ways by the process carried out in the soil from ozone depletion and global warming to rainforest destruction and water pollution strategy of india on environmental changes india is the fourth largest economy of the world india is fifth among greenhouse gas producing countries in the world government of india has established national work plan to control environment changes so that it can present itself as a green nation in the global environment following are the components of national work plan national solar mission nsm the national solar mission is a part of the eight climate change mission of india building a solar india is a very ambitious dream but not an impossible dream as india is a tropical country with abundant sunshine national solar mission was launched as a part of national action plan on climate change napcc in 2010 the objective of the National Solar Mission is to establish India as a global leader in solar energy by cre creating conditions for its diffusion across the country as quickly as possible. National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency NM Tripoli. The National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency NM Tripoli was undertaken to promote the market for energy efficiency by fostering innovative policies and effective market instruments in 2009. It was approved in principle by the PM's Council on Climate Change, National Mission on Sustainable Habitat, NMSH. Approved by the PM in 2011, it aims to make cities sustainable through improvements in energy efficiency in buildings, management of solid waste and shift to public transport. The Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs backs the mission. National Water Mission The objective of National Water Mission is conservation of water, minimizing wastage and ensuring its equitable distribution both across and within states through integrated water resources development and management.
The mission was put in place to ensure integrated water resource management, helping to conserve water, minimize wastage, and ensure more equitable distribution both across and within states. This mission is one of the most proactive ones and is backed by the National Water Policy as well as the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development, and Ganga Rejuvenation. National Mission for Sustaining the Himalayan Ecosystem, NMSHE. A multi prog cross cutting mission across various sectors, NMSAG got a nod from the Union Cabinet in 2014. It aims at protecting the Himalayas. It has mapped institutes and civil society organizations working on the Himalayan ecology for ease of co coordination between governmental and non governmental agencies. NSMHE has six task forces involving specialized institutions for each task. These institutions are Wildlife Institute of India, Microflora and Fauna, and Wildlife and Animal Populations, Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, Natural and Geological Wealth, National Institute of Hydrology, Water, Ice, Snow, including Glaciers, GB. Uh, Pant Institute of Himalayan Environment and Development, Forest Resources and Plant Biodiversity, Jawaharlal Nehru University Traditional Knowledge System and Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Himalayan Agriculture, National Mission for a Green India. This mission has adopted an integrated cross-sectoral cross -sectoral approach as it will be implemented on both public as well as private lands with a key role of the local communities in planning decision making implementation and monitoring it also termed as the green india mission scheme as a, as it aims at protecting restoring and enhancing india's diminishing forest cover and responding to climate change by a combination of adaptation and mitigation measures driven by the ministry of environment and forest it received the nod of approval from the cabinet in 2014 national mission for sustainable agriculture another one of the government most efficient mission it has been formulated for enhancing agricultural productivity, especially in rain-fed areas, focusing on integrated farming, water use efficiency, soil health management, and the snare easing resources conservation. It got the nod back in 2010 and has recently got approval for one of its key missions, National Bamboo Mission by the Cabinet. National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change. It was formulated to create a good network with existing knowledge institutions which can help with capacity building, improving understanding of key climate process and climate risks. The mission seeks to build a dynamic and vibrant knowledge system that informs and supports national policy and action for responding effectively to climate change challenges while not com uh, compromising on the nation's growth goals. Department of Science and Technology drives the mission and, and a recent development under the mission was government's approval for establishing Karnataka's first climate change lab. Greenhouse gases and effect. Greenhouse gases. A greenhouse gas is a gas in an atmosphere that absorbs and emits radiant energy within the thermal range. This process is the fundamental cause of the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse gases comprises less than 1% of the atmosphere. The major greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are carbon dioxide, CO2, methane, CH4, nitrous oxide, N2O, fluorinated gases, CFC, and ozone, O3. Atmospheric water vapor H2O also makes a large contribution to the natural greenhouse gas. Greenhouse effect. A greenhouse uh, gas house is a building made of glass chambers in which plants are uh, grown in cold countries or in cold climate areas. There is continued increase in temperature in greenhouse when outside temperature remain low. It protects plants from forest. The greenhouse effect is a naturally occurring phenomenon that blankets the earth lower atmosphere and warm it, maintaining the temperature suitable for living things to survive. Just as greenhouse that keep the air warm inside their chamber, water vapor and greenhouse gases warm the earth. Greenhouse gases play an important role in the balance of earth 
cooling and warming. The effect was first recognized by French scientist Jean Baptiste Fourier. Biofuels Biofuels are renewable energy sources made from organic matter or wastes that can play a valuable role in reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Biofuels and biofuels are combustible fuels created from biomass. In other words, fuels created from recently living plant matter as opposed to ancient plant matter in hydrocarbons. The term biofuel is usually used to reference liquid fuels such as ethanol and biodiesel that are used as replacement at transportation fuels like petroleum, diesel and jet fuels. Biofuels are grouped by categories first generation, uh, second generation and third generation based on the type of feed, uh, feed stock, the input material used to produce them. These are first generation biofuels are produced from food crops for ethanol feedstocks including sugarcane, corn, maize, etc. For biodiesel, feedstocks are naturally occurring vegetable soils such as soybean and canola. Second generation biofuels are produced from cellulosic materials such as wood, grasses and edible parts of the parts of plants. This material is more difficult to break down through to give fermentation and therefore requires pre-treatment treatment before it can be processed third generation biofuels are produced using the lipid uh, production from allies valuation of environmental goods environmental goods are generally non-market items which includes fresh air fresh water green transport infrastructure public park urban park river forest sea shore or beach mountain etc environmental goods are subclass of public goods importance of valuation of environmental goods need of valuation of environmental goods is important for fixing environmental responsibility the harm to good uh, harm to environmental goods due to a government policy requires its valuation as it can form a basis for changes in environmental policies. Valuation of environmental goods is important for a solution of environmental dis dispute related to new mines, powerhouses, etc. and related environmental disputes. So the need of valuation of environmental goods is very important. Environmental policy market take decisions on environmental laws. They have to consider about environmental laws while taking These decisions, the valuation of environmental goods. Valuation of environmental goods is important for proposed environmental program like greenhouse gas education reduction program and health program. Methods of valuation of environmental goods. Express preference EP techniques. <coughs> this method of many measuring individual willingness to pay is usually based on contingent valuation method CBM. This research fo fo focuses on defining, categorizing, and <coughs> applicability of various environmental valuation techniques that have been in and can be applied in attaching value owed to a given resource using expressed rival preference method. Random assessment method. Random ass assessment is the process of randomly assigning participants into treatment and control groups for of an uh, ex experiment this is done to improve the validity and reliability of an experiment by eliminating any bias in the assignment process this method can directly determine how much one can pay for environmental resources if they are deprived of resources then how much compensation will they get for this complete knowledge of environmental goods or service is necessary <coughs> Three important methods come under this technique. Trade, <coughs> trade of game method. This method method relate to a set of contingent valuation techniques that relay on the creation of the hypothetical market for some good or service in an interactive repeating bid game. The respondents are given a variety of bids to determine at what price they are indifferent between receiving or paying the bid or receiving or losing the environmental goods at issue. The choice indicates a person's willingness to trade money for an increased level of an environmental good. When no money is involved, the approach becomes similar to the costless choice method. 
costless choice method. The costless choice method is a contingent valuation technique whereby people are asked to choose between several hypothetical bundles of goods to determine their implicit valuation of an environmental good or service. Since no monetary figures are involved, this approach may be more useful in settings where butter and subsistence production are common. Delphi method. <coughs> The Delphi method is a variant of the survey based techniques wherein experts rather than consumers are interviewed. These experts place value values on a good or service through, through an interactive process with feedback among the group between each iteration. This expert based approach may be useful when valuing very esoteric resources. Method method based on market prices or method manifesting willingness to pay. The demand for environmental goods can be revealed by examining the purchases of related goods in the private marketplace. These methods are as follows. Travel cost method. This method seeks to determine the demand for a recreational site, number of visits per year to a park as functions of variable like price, visitors, income and socio-economic characteristics. The price is usually the sum of entry fees to the site cost of travel of opportunity cost of time spent this approach is widely used to value the recreational benefits for public parks and other natural areas <coughs> Hedonic price method. The underlying assumptions of the hedonic price method is that the price of a property is related to the stream of <coughs> stream of benefits to be driven from it. The method relies on the hypothesis that the prices which individuals pay for commodities reflect both environmental and non-environmental characteristics. The hedonic price approach attempts to identify how much of a property differential is due to a particular environmental differences between properties and how much people are willing to pay for an improvement in the environmental quality that they face and what is the social value of improvement. Preventable expenditure method. This method is a cost-based valuation method that uses data on actual expenditure made to alleviate all environmental problems. Often cost may be incurred to mitigate the damage caused by an adverse environmental impact. This method assesses the value of non-marketed commodities such as cleaner air and water through the <coughs> amount individuals are willing to pay for market goods and services to mitigate an environmental externality or to prevent a utility loss from environmental degradation or to change their behavior to acquire greater environmental quality. <laughs> surrogate markets when no market exists for a good or service and therefore no market price is observed then Surrogate or substitute markets can be used to derive information on values. <coughs> the effective environmental damages on other markets like property values and wages of workers are also uh, evaluated. Valuation in the case of property is based on risk involved in evaluating the value of property due to environmental damage. <coughs> Property value method. In this method, a surrogate market approach is used to place monetary values on different levels of environmental quality. <coughs> this approach uses data on market prices for homes and other real estate so <coughs> to estimate consumers' willingness to pay for improved levels of environmental quality, air, noise, etc. Wake differential approach. This approach is a surrogate market approach that uses information on differences in wake rate for similar jobs in different areas to estimate monetary values for different levels of environmental quality. This approach has been used to estimate values for such environmental variables as defined levels of congestion, air pollution, and uh, aesthetics. Wakes also vary in response to various factors such as education and training, natural de and dexterity, experience, demand, and supply in each level market area occupational risk to health probability probability of death and associated living conditions including environmental ambiences etc the general hedonic wake equation can be expressed as p equal to f j r s p equal to wake payable f equal to the pay, uh, payment rate for a given job j equal to a factor of another job related attributes example working hours holiday sickness benefits etc are equal to the risk of death and is equal to a factor of skills required to do the job cost of cost based method cost based methods opportunity cost method <coughs> 
the method values the benefits of environmental protection in terms of what is being foregone to achieve it this forms the basis of compensation payments for the compulsory purchase by the government of land and property under eminent domain laws further it assumes that the land owner or user has property rights over the use of the land or the natural resources and that to restrict these rights the government on behalf of the society must compensate the owner the opportunity cost method is useful in cases where it is difficult to enumerate the benefits of an environmental change the opportunity cost method does not include non marketed public good values of land Reloca reallocation cost method this is a cost based technique used to estimate the monetary value of environmental damages based on the potential cost of reallocating a physical facility that would be <coughs> damaged by a change in environmental quality this method relies on data on potential expenditure replacement cost method this is a cost based technique that measures the potential expenditure that would be required to replace or restore a productive asset that would be damaged by some project or development this uh, these costs are then compared to the cost of preventing the damage from occurring to determine which is more efficient other methods the dose res and the dose response method this method requires in uni uh, information on the effect that a change in a particular chemi particular chemical or pollutant has on the level of an economic activity or an consumer's utility for example ground levels of air pollution such as ozone affect the growth of various plants species differentially and dose response relationship or production function approaches are perhaps the most familiar valuation techniques human capital or foregone earning approach the human capital approach values environmental attributes through their effect on the quantity and quality of labor the loss earning approach focuses on the impact with adverse environmental conditions have on human health and the resultant cost to society in terms of income lost through illness accidents and spending on medical treatments the principle involved in this approach is that of valuing life in terms of the value of labor threat to india's environment the developmental activities in india have resulted in <coughs> pressure on its finite natural resources besides creating impact on human health and well-being air pollution water contamination soil erosion deforestation and wildlife extinction are some of the most pressing <coughs> environmental issue of india some of the some of the priority issue are discussed below land degradation in india land in india suffer, suffers from varying degrees and types of degradation mainly due to excessive use and inappropriate management practices the factors responsible for land degradation in india are loss of vegetation occurring due to deforestation unsustainable fuel wood and fodder extraction shifting cultivation reduction of forest lands forest fires and overgrazing non adaptation adaptation of adequate soil conservation measures improper crop rotation indiscri indiscriminate use of agrochemicals such as fertilizers and pesticides improper planning and management of irrigation system extraction of groundwater in excess of the regenerative capacity poverty of the agriculture dependent people open access to resources loss of biodiversity biodiversity is the variety of all life forms including animals and plants that can be found either in just one location or on the whole planet loss of biodiversity means that some of the species of animals and plants were, will be lost as a consequences of environmental degradation this this threat is more pronounced in case of india because it has only 2.5% world geographical area but it is home to 17% of the world's human population and 20% of the world's livestock population to meet the needs of the human and livestock population about 15 million cubic meter cubic uh, meter forests are uh, fail each year in excess of the normal requirements deforestation at such a large scale has the following consequences it leads to soil erosion according to an estimate quantity 
of nutrition loss due to soil erosion each year ranges from 5.8 to 8.4 million ton, tons. The forest sustain all types of life forms. Life forms destruction of this forest means losing the various life forms sustained by these forests. According to an estimate, at least 1,000 species are lost in a year. Air pollution. Pollution from vehicle and industri industries are the major sources of air pollution. These are as follows. Vehicle pollution. Vehicle emissions are of particular concern since these are ground level sources and thus have the maximum impact on the general pollution. The number of vehicles has increased from 3 lakh in 1957 to 67 crores in 2003. In 2003, Personal transport vehicles, two wheeled, uh, two wheeled and car, uh, cars only, contributed about 80% of the total number of registered vehicles, thus contributing significantly to air pollution. Industrial, <laughs> industrial pollution. India is one of the 10 most industrialized nations of the world. This status has brought with it unwanted and unanticipated consequences like unplanned urbanization, pollution and the risk of NCNG. Accidents. The Central Pollution Control Board (CPCB) is uh, CPCB has has identified seventeen categories of industries, large and medium scale, as significantly polluting. Management of fresh water. Water is an equally important element of life, and its pollution is equally serious. Water becomes polluted when chemicals and other waste materials are dumped into it. Polluted water is the principal cause of disease like diarrhea and hepatitis. Thus, the management of fresh water is essential to sustain life. Management of solid waste. It is very essential that solid waste should be treated chemically. Efforts should be made for effective management of non-biodegradable waste also. Biodegradable waste should be converted into compost. <coughs> Market failure. Market failure <coughs> occurs when the conditions for Perfect competition are not made. If the market fails, then government interventions designed to correct the market failure may bring um, benefits to society. The economic theory of market failure seeks to account for the inefficient outcomes in markets that otherwise conform to the assumptions about market held by neoclassical economics. Markets that fe <coughs> feature perfect competitions symmetrical information and completeness when when failure happiness less welfare is created then could be created given the available resources the descriptions of market failure were developed in the middle of the 20th century is as part of a large school of keynesian welfare and micro uh, macroeconomics reasons for market failure <coughs> Positive and negative externalities. An externality is an effect to a third party that is caused by the consumption of or production of goods, good or service. A positive uh, externality is a positive spillover that results from the consumption or production from production of a good or service. A negative externality is a negative spillover effect on third parties. For example, smoke many negative impact the health of people. Even if they do not directly engage in smoking, <coughs> lack of public goods. Public goods are goods where the total cost of production does not increase with the number of consumers. As an example of a public good, a lighthouse <coughs> has a fixed cost of production that is the same whether one ship or 100 ships use its lights. Public good. Public good can be underproduced. There is little in incentive from a private standpoint to provide a lighthouse because one can wait for someone else to provide it and then use, use its light without incurring a cost. This problem someone benefiting from resources or goods and services without paying for the cost of the benefit is known as the free rider problem and it leads to short supply of public good. Un underproduction of merit goods. A merit good is in that <coughs> society believes that uh, be uh, believes is underconsumed often comes to comes with uh, positive externalities. For example, education, healthcare, and sports centers uh, are considered merit goods. Overproduction and or of demerit goods. Demerit good is a <coughs> private good that society believes is 
ओवर कंज्यूम ऑफ कम्स विद नेगेटिव एक्साइटीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल सिगरेट्स एल्कोहल एंड पॉजिटिव पॉजिट्यूशन पॉजिट्यूशन आर कॉन्सिडरेड डिमेड गुड्स एव्यूज ऑफ मोनोपोली पावर इम्परफेक्ट मार्केट रेस्ट्रिक्ट आउटपुट इन एंड अटेम टू मैक्सिमाइज प्रॉफिट इनकम्प्लीट इन इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट मार्केट वन पार्टी हैज मेटेरियल इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट द अदर डज नॉट और बोथ पार्टीज लैक मेटेरियल इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट वुड एफेक्ट वेदर और नॉट द ट्रेड ऑकर्स और फॉर वाट प्राइस इट ऑकर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर अ यूज कार द सेलर प्रोबेबली नोज मोर अबाउट द कार एंड हैज एन इंसेंटिव टू सीट सच एसेमेट्री कैन लीड टू डिस्टॉर्शन इन द मार्केट दिस प्रॉब्लम इज नोन एज एसेमेट्रिक इन्फॉर्मेशन मे जस्ट टू ओवरकम मार्केट फेल्योर टैक्सेस ऑन नेगेटिव एक्साइटीज टैक्सेस ऑन नेगेटिव एक्साइटीज आर इंटेंडेड टू मेक कंज्यूमर्स प्रोड्यूसर्स पे द फुल सोशल कॉस्ट ऑफ द गुड दिस रिड्यूसेज कंजम्पन एंड क्रिएटेड अ मोर सोशली एफिशियंट आउटकम सब्सिडीज ऑन पॉजिटिव एक्साइटीज सब्सिडीज इन फॉर द गवर्नमेंट पेइंग पार्ट ऑफ द कॉस्ट टू द फार्म दिस रिड्यूस द प्राइस ऑफ द गुड एंड शुड एनकरेज मोर कंजम्पन लॉ एंड रेगुलेशन टू ओवरकम मार्केट फेलियोर द गवर्नमेंट मे प्लेस लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन विच प्रोहिबिट सर्टन बिहेवियर एंड एक्शन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक रोड प्राइसिंग स्पेसिफिक टैक्स रिलेटेड टू कंडीशन पॉल्यूशन परमिट्स गिविंग फार्मस द एबिलिटी टू रिट्रेड पॉल्यूशन परमिट्स एडवर्टाइजिंग गवर्नमेंट कैंपेन्स टू चेंज पीपल्स रेफरेंसेज नाटगेज नाटगेज थियरी सजेस्ट कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर कैन बी इन्फ्लुएंस बाय स्मॉल सजेशंस एंड पॉजिटिव रेनफोर्समेंट्स प्रोपोनेंट्स ऑफ नाटगेज थियरी सजेस्ट दैट well placed nutcase can reduce market failure save the government money encourage desirable actions and help increase the efficiency of resource use buffer stock scheme a buffer stock scheme is a government plan to stabilize prices in volatile markets policies to overcome poverty inequality inequality can be seen as a type of market failure policies to reduce unemployment policies to ओवरकम मार्केट फेलियोर सच एज जियोग्राफिकल एंड जियोग्राफिकल एंड ऑक्यूपेशनल इमोबिलिटीज चोज थियोरियम द चोज थियोरियम वॉज डेवलप्ड बाई इकोनॉमिक रोनल्ड चोज इन इकोनॉमिक्स द चोज थियोरियम डिस्क्राइब्स द इकोनॉमिक एफिशियंसी ऑफ एन इकोनॉमिक एलोकेशन और आउटकम इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ एक्सटर्निटीज द थियरीज स्टेट्स दैट इफ ट्रेड इन आ एक्सटर्निटी इज पॉसिबल एंड देयर आर sufficiently low transaction cost bargaining will lead to a pareto efficient outcome regardless of uh, regardless of the initial allocation of property according to the chose theorem in the in the face of market in in, in efficiencies resulting from externalities private citizens or firms are available to negotiate a mutually beneficial socially desirable solution or as long as there are no cost associated with the uh, negotiations process the result is expected to hold regardless of whether the polluter has the right to pollute or the average affected wastander has right to a clean air um, environment the chose theorem is applied applied to situations where, where the economic activities of of one party impose a cost on cost on or damage the property of another party based on the bargaining that occurs during the application of the chose theorem funds may either be offered to compensate one party for the other's activities or to pay the party whose active activity inflicts the damages to forgo that activity this chose theorem has been widely viewed as an argument against legislative or regulatory uh, preemption of conflicts over property rights and privately negoti negotiated settlements theorem theorem assumptions of those theorem property rights must be clearly defined there must be little to no transaction cost there must be few affected parties or else the transaction cost of organizing them gets to be too great there must be no wealth effect the efficient solution will be the same regardless of who gets the initial property rights full knowledge of pollution impact and abandonment cost pollution impact can be measured in money terms no interferences of government criticism of the chose theorem today it is often not feasible to have low transaction costs as many issues are global 
to get rid of a uh, read of a pollution externality you would have to define the problem its monetary implications how to solve it and then draw up an agreement lots of time and money involved property rights are not as strictly defined as chose theory requires the assumptions of full competition competition is based on impractical recognition cost benefit analysis and compensation criteria cost benefit analysis is a process used primarily by business that weights the sum of the benefits such as financial gains of an action against the negatives or cost of that action it may be used to compare competed or potential courses of actions or to estimate or evaluate the value against the cost of a decision project or policy the concept of cba dates back to an 1848 articles by jules dupitz and was formalized in subsequent subsequent works by alfred marshall cost benefit analysis can be explained as a procedure for estimating all costs involved and possible profits to be derived from a business opportunity or proposal cba is a method for assessing the economic efficiency of proposed public policies through the systematic pre prediction of social cost and social benefits the concept of willingness to pay an opportunity cost guide the valuation of projected policy effects in terms of a money metric the cost benefit analysis is a management technique that has attracted the widest attention for application in the application in the health field the uh, economic benefits of any program are compared with the cost of that program the benefits are expressed in monetary terms to determine whether whether a given program is economically sound and to select the best out of several alternate programs it takes into account both quantitative and qualitative factors for analysis of the value for money for a particular project or investment opportunity benefits to cost ratio and other indicators are used to conduct such analysis cost benefit analysis process firstly project related comprehensive list of total cost and benefit is prepared under this process direct and indirect cost intangible cost opportunity cost and cost of potential risk includes in cost all types of direct and indirect revenue and intangible benefits are also included in this <coughs> the aim of cost benefit analysis is to channel resources into project which will yield the greatest gain in net benefit to society maximization of net benefit means the maximization of society utility the due pit <coughs> examined this problem first in 1844 let us understand his arguments in figure drawn under the assumptions of perfect competition which is as follows <coughs> We have such a quality uh, quantity, why price, M C one, M C two, or A B or J H, K E, C G D or F. <coughs> In our figure, it is assumed that the undertaking of the project lowers the marginal cost from M C one to M C two. Consequently, the market price is determined at D. The point of intersections of <coughs> marginal cost with the demand curve ab at the new price consumers willing to pay ob de for the quantity oe the area ob de consists of two parts oa is de the amount actually paid and age b d the extra amount they are willing to pay called consumer surplus evaluation of cost benefit analysis evaluation on the basis of benefit benefits refer to the addition to the flow of national output resulting from investment in <coughs> particular project it can be following types real benefits in cost benefit analysis we are concerned with real benefits rather than nominal benefits flowing from project a toll tax in road construction project may be may increase the cost of traveling but if the same project increases increases safety facilities with saving of petrol then it is said to have real benefits direct and indirect benefits direct benefits are those which can be obtained immediately and directly from the project and indirect benefits are those which are more or 
less incidental to direct benefits. For example, road construction projects have provided employment opportunities to thousands of people. Tangible and intangible benefits. Benefits flowing from a project may be tangible or intangible. Tangible benefits are those which can be computed and measured in terms of money profile. Intangible benefits cannot be measured in monetary terms. For example, benefits of low accident <coughs> accident rates due to good uh, road construction projects are tangible and can be computed. Evaluation on the basis of good costs. The calculation of cost of a project is very difficult because various types of costs are considered in its construction. Cost means the value of resources used in the construction of a project. It includes the following real and nominal cost. Cost may be real or nominal as they involve real sacrifice on the part of people or otherwise not. If money is borrowed from the people, it is a case of nominal cost. But if people are required to construct project themselves, they will be incurring real sacrifice and then it will be a case of real cost. Primary and secondary cost. <coughs> Primary or direct cost are those which are directly incurred on the construction of a project but the secondary cost include the cost uh, include the cost providing benefits to the people working on project such as or uh, such, such as cost of constructing houses schools hospital etc at the site of project associated cost they are the value of goods and uh, services needed beyond those included <coughs> the cost of a project to make immediate products or services of the project available for use or sale for example cost of loading charge charge for water would be it is associated cost of producing crops project cost these are the value of resources used in constructing maintaining and operating the project this includes cost of labor capital equipment intermediate goods natural resources and foreign exchange etc Criteria for cost benefit analysis net present value NPV criterion NPV. This is an important criterion for project evaluation. NPV equal to present value of benefit minus present value of operating and maintaining cost minus initial outlay. It is also expressed as the net present value of benefits criterion. NPV of benefit equal to gross present value of benefits minus gross present value of cost. If NPV greater than zero then the project is socially profitable if there are number of mutually exclusive projects then the project with the highest net present value of benefits will be chosen npv equal to b1 by i1 plus i1 plus b2 by 1 plus i2 plus bn by 1 plus in minus c1 by 1 plus i1 plus c2 by 1 plus i2 plus cn by 1 plus in b1 by b1 comma b2 bn series of gross present benefits in years 1 to n c1 c2 cn series of gross present cost in years 1 to n n i is a social rate of discount interest rate of return criterion irr <coughs> the criterion refers to the percentage rate of return implicit in the flows of benefits and cost of project margin okay, margin defines the internal rate of return irr as the discount rate at which present value of return may minus cost is zero the mathematical formula for the computation of <coughs> computation of irr is b1 by minus c1 by 1 plus r1 by plus b2 minus c2 by 1 plus r2 plus bn minus cn by 1 plus rn equal to zero in case of mutually exclusive projects the project to be selected must have highest rate of return social rate of discount srd the rate at which future benefits must be discontinued discounted to make them comparable with present benefit is called social rate of discount in other words it is the rate of premium which the society puts for preferring the present consumption to future consumption This is illustrated with the help of a diagram below. We have present consumption or we have future consumption A1, A2, G, S1. The present consumption A1 is taken along horizontal axis and future consumption A2 is taken along vertical axis. A1, A2 is the transformation frontier or investment possibility curve.
it consists of a series of projects arranged from right to left in order of their rate of return the cost of sacrifice of present consumption and the return is the gain of consumption in future the society society reaches an optimal position when transformation curve e1 a2 equals its social independence curve s1 s1 at point g limitations of cost benefit analysis the correct estimation of benefits from a project also becomes difficult due to uncertainty regarding the future demand and supply of the products from a new project and their impices it also ignores the problem of opportunity cost there is no perfect method to find social discount rate difficulties in selecting appropriate decisions rules difficulties in the cost assessment